Listen and subscribe to the Growth Craft Startup Community Podcast on all the major podcast players, including iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere where podcasts are available. And leave a five-star review if you like it. We need those reviews to grow the show, and it's the easiest way to help us grow the show that you can do right now. So head on over to iTunes, head on over to Google Podcasts or Spotify, and leave a five-star review for the Growth Craft Startup Community Podcast. And tell all of your friends who are entrepreneurs to take a listen. And thanks. Hello, my name is Hassan Sorrells, and this is Tom Libby. Welcome back, everyone. And you are listening uh, to the Growth Craft Podcast. Now, the Growth Craft Podcast is designed with the startup founder in mind. This podcast is committed to growing your connections to our Growth Craft advisors, increasing your engagement with the Growth Craft community overall, and to growing your knowledge about all of the benefits that Growth Craft can provide for your startup and for your project. And we can't wait to bring you along on our journey today. Now, here on the podcast, we interview startup founders, advisors, and others about their journey, their process, and the specific ways that they are trying to make a dent in the universe. And I'd like to welcome to the podcast today, Steph Davis. How are you doing, Steph? I'm fine. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with your Great. listeners. Yes. So for our listeners, let's start off with kind of the hard question first. Um, what is it that you do exactly? Well, uh, my name is Steph Davis, and I am a biochemist with uh, biotechnology experience and market surgery experience, and occasionally I work at STEM Agile. Okay. And I, ha I have a early stage uh, preclinical drug discovery company, which I'm working on now. Okay. Tell us a little bit about that company and about how you kind of came to, to found that. Well, I leverage my skills in... Um, but basically medicinal chemistry and microsurgery. Um, so I help other companies make a certain amount of uh, revenue. So I, I do like that uh, working in that field. So I decided to set up my own company, have uh, more control. And we are uh, structured to be a low risk investment opportunity, but still have an impact on healthcare in the U.S. and abroad. So we practice honest chemical innovation to get good results and decrease health disparities. So are you are you helping other people do their drug research or are you, do you actually have your own your own uh your own like drugs that you're producing yourselves and then trying to go to market with those particular drugs? Yeah, we what we're doing is uh we are a mainly a pre-clinical drug discovery company supplement research firm. So uh, some of the products will be in-house, we develop it for ourselves, and others we will outsource it to larger companies and they develop on develop it on to bigger uh, advanced drugs. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, I probably have 18,000 questions based on just <laughs> The why and the how. Never mind. Like, oh, all the stuff oh we, okay. Never, I'll, never I'll, mind all the stuff that we want to get to. <laughs> like, yeah, um, that's no so, so no. Steph, let, let, let's 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 okay. let's simplify it a little bit and ask you this question instead. So, why? What prompted you to do this? I know in your in your intro there, you talked about a little bit more control and a little bit uh, more cost effectiveness. But what was like the what created the catalyst for you to say, I just wrote, I want to go start my own company and I I I want to go solve this problem. So, what what is what would that what did that look like? Uh, I guess that I have a background in uh, really cell biology uh, and drug discovery along with microsurgery. So uh, I was very much aware of people taking a variety of drugs. I'm into alternative health. I would see a lot of people get sick, sicker, and companies were not being honest with the side effects. Um, and I'm a member of the American Chemical Society. There's a lot of material about a lot of products or uh, drugs that are dishonest about side effects, just want to make money. And I've seen, I've had to help my own parents when they were given the wrong medication out point 
put like wrong medications and confront the doctors and I wouldn't know what to tell them my background, but I catch them, you know, and I caught other people. I've had, uh, I've helped other people with cancer, extended their lives. And I said, well, I will, I'd like to be able to have an, uh, an impact in the field of drug discovery and healthcare and let me go on and set the company up. And also I can obtain a bigger salary and uh, as a scientist. But basically, an impetus for this was to have a, a better impact on the belly, decent uh, products with minimal side effects, and uh, will save people's lives. So, so our, product, our products, uh, uh, we it's a preclinical drug discovery company and supplement firm. Okay. So <clears throat> you said a lot of different things there. And... Um, I am not, I've said this a lot lately, weirdly enough. I'm just the poor humanities major in the room. So I wasn't smart. I wasn't smart enough to be a scientist. Sorry. <laughs> I, just, I wasn't smart enough to go for STEM. My, my math grades weren't that good. Um, uh, don't, blame, don't blame yourself. A lot of people can't teach math. That's something else. I, see. I teach pre calculus math. A lot of people cannot really teach math. I, uh, that's the problem right there. I don't want to get started on that one. <laughs> right. You can only solve one problem at a time. But let me let me use my humble humanities major sort of understanding of what you just said there and ask you this question for clarity's sake, or at least so that I can understand a little bit better. So you said um, the thing that I caught in there was you were talking about your company being leveraged to solve healthcare disparities. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of discussion in our in our political and our social culture these days about healthcare disparities. What specific types of disparities are you looking for your company to help solve um, with this drug research? Well, uh, the products are going to be more personalized. And we also look at the fact that financial disparities, uh, person's ethnic background can affect their health care. You just don't make a product and just dump it out there without looking at the total human being. But we're, we're interested in uh, uh, our research encompasses looking at fixing the total health, but we do focus on certain pathologies, but you have to look at the total um, health economic environment of your patients. And so that's what in this, this situation of making a lot of the products more personalized because people are different. There's financial disparities do affect a lot of people's health outcome. Mm -hmm. There's no denying you can read about that from the uh, Harvard School of Medicine on the effect of a person's uh, ethnic background and um, health, health health outcomes and medical care in the U.S. That's a fact. NIH, Harvard School of Medicine have a lot of material on that. Sure. Okay. Uh, the follow-up question to that then is, um, when we're thinking about the positioning of your company, or when I'm thinking about the positioning of your company, um, and I think about the overall sort of healthcare approach in the United States, one of the things that strikes me, because I have had various and sundry interactions with the healthcare system in the United States, as many people have, one of the things that strikes me is the healthcare system itself benefits from people being sick, people being ill, people being, you know, prescribed medications. Um, what what is the posture that your com your company takes or the position your company takes towards that overall healthcare industry is it is it one where we need to be working better with that yeah. industry in order to have better outcomes or is it one where no we're sort of because you mentioned alternative healthcare too we're sort of going to be setting up our own system and our own we're going to use this company to set up our own our own system over here is that which one of those approaches is what you're is the one that you're taking well, we have a multifactorial approach, which means okay. that we practice honest chemical innovation. The products uh, will be made in the U.S. for good quality control. Okay. Uh, no hocus, no hocus pocus ma uh, medicine or math. Uh, okay. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of that going on, unfortunately, right now. A lot of some of the products being made overseas, is, uh, and you can read about this from the American Chemical Society. A lot of products being manufactured overseas uh, as far as healthcare products. Um, there is lying about the results, uh, the numbers, or maybe just uh, mix things together and leave what they're putting in the adjuvants, called adjuvants, 
add it to different compounds, different drug bleeds, uh, can make people sick. A lot of it's left out once you get here. The side effects, uh, it's the same. A lot of people are dying, especially you can look at maternal health care, different groups of populations in, in the U.S. Um, so uh, we have a multifactorial approach, approach as far as uh, incorporating a variety of different um, uh, strategies to decrease risk, chemical strategies to decrease risk, as well as management strategies to decrease risk so we get a decent product to have a better uh, overall health out, health outcome of, for the patient. So, Steph, when we talk about like the healthcare system, right? And for those of you who are listening, I'm using my finger air quotes up here. So, <laughs> when we're talking about the healthcare system, that it's ginormous, right? Like, there, I mean, there's, yeah. nobody would nobody would argue the fact that there the, the the healthcare system as a whole is so big, and and we're talking about whether whether we're talking about companies, doctors, hospitals, patients, end consumers. There's a whole there's an entire ecosystem that we that we look at when we're talking about the healthcare system. Who who in that system is your actual customer? Like who who are you like trying to do business with? Is it? It's, I'm assuming it's not directly to a consumer or to a patient, right? Like I'm assuming there's some sort of person or or is it a is it a company? Is it a doctor? Is it a is it is it compound pharmacies? Is it like like who? Who is like who are you trying to go and, and and work with to make this system better? Join us online via Zoom at the Growthcraft Startup Community Founders Forum each third Tuesday of the month at 4:30 p.m. Eastern Time. Look, advisors and founders, we're we're all in this together. Building relationships with your peers and entrepreneurship is just as important as connecting with experts and advisors. Each month, every third Thursday, we'll meet online via Zoom to share ideas, get support, support each other, and talk about universal issues that nearly all startups share. We'll celebrate our victories, chat about challenges, and then break out into small groups to address a timely topic of interest. It's a great way to meet like-minded entrepreneurs. Check out the links to the third Tuesday events on the Growthcraft website and join us at the Growthcraft Startup Community Founders Forum in the show notes below the podcast player you're listening to right now. Well, we will have a variety of different clients, like hospitals, clinics. Uh, the supplements will be for basically adults, you know, specialized targeted supplements. You know, we, we are focused in the natural product space, which is better. So uh, we have an opportunity to set up a division over in the EU, which is great, you know. One of which is Sweden. So uh, we're excited about that. So we want to have a global footprint. But so, you're one working, of the, so my understanding, so you're working through either a hospital or a clinic for them to leverage your you as a resource so that they can then prescribe something to a patient. Is yeah, that, we, we, we have we'll have a uh, uh, expanded sales team. We have lab space already in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And so we will have some R&D we're done on site. Some of it will be outsourced. We have some CRO people. So uh, we have our products of like our early stage drugs. Or like I said, it's preclinical. But we will, we will advance products, sell uh, products to larger companies and they will to, um, uh, work on these more. They will advance into a later stage as a full-blown drug. So some of it we would keep. Some of them we will outsource to someone else we get some capital from selling an um, early stage drug and they take it to a later stage. But as is, is, uh, uh, our situation selling uh, early stage drugs as well as supplements for a variety of different pathologies. So you keep saying early stage. So you're, you keep saying early stage and preclinical, which means you're, you're not going through all the FDA rigmarole that in like for the advanced drugs that, or, or are you going through at least that initial uh, FDA approval? Like, yeah, we, I mean, we follow the FDA guidelines as far as chemical chemistry lead sure. design. I mean, uh, that's why I said honest chemical, chemical innovation is not uh, just thrown in a pot and <laughs> mixed up. <laughs> but yeah. uh, no, we still follow uh, FDA guidelines as far as our, our, our uh, medicinal chem uh, research process. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, we are, like I said, we're preclinical. And medicinal and um, supplement research company. 
preclinical drugs. So products are put out a lot earlier. It doesn't take 10 years to get something developed. Okay. So in thinking about being preclinical and being supplement and being in that space, um, if I were an investor in the the health tech healthcare technology space or even in the biotechnology space, um what would you need from me other than money, of course, you know, <laughs> um, but um, what kind of support would you be looking for? Um, what kind of funding would you be looking for? Are you looking for funding right now? Like walk us through a little bit of that, a little bit of that piece of the process. Uh, at the moment, our business model is hybrid niche R and D. Um, we are looking for additional capital so we can optimize and commercialize our products. Um, so, uh, my background is not high finance. <laughs> the math is even different. <laughs> so we were, we are looking to get a CEO that has a, uh, familiar, is familiar with tech, but also with the intricacies of finance. I mean, even the finance world, they got, uh, AI and this quantum finance methodology to introduce. So we need someone that can keep up with that and, um, know about issuing a variety of different types of stocks. You know, um, so we would like an investor that would um, advise us and guide us as far as finance. Um, I would like, I guess, we're more or less looking at equity financing. Um, we have a loan guarantee, uh, but I heard we heard that equity finance is better. We are reaching out now to raise additional capital. Okay. Okay. Um, go ahead, Tom. You had a question. Uh, no, I was actually I was actually going to go a different direction and talk about Growthcraft a little bit. So if you have another medical or company question, I, go for it first. I do. Yes. <laughs> so um, okay. So when I think of supplements, um, again, forgive my poor understanding of all of this. Um, I think of vitamins, like I, I really do, or I I I lift weights, so oh, you know, or I work out. Like I think of some when I think of supplements, I think of it in that direction. I think that's probably what a lot of our our audience kind of thinks of when you say supplements though, that's not really what you're, what you're mean, right? Like you, you mean supplemental drugs, right. To deal with diagnosed illnesses. Correct. That's, that's sort of the space that you're in. Uh, yeah. It, it, uh, supplements encompass different um, functions. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, like I said, with the natural products um, space uh, focus, Origin rather, um, they target. They have a target for different diseases, or they probably have a preventive maintenance function. Okay. So oh. um, I strongly believe in preventive care, preventive um, maintenance of the body to 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 decrease the onset of uh, disability, uh, disabling disorders. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a multiple multiple types of uh, of um, of our supplements. Some are liquids, some are pills, capsules. Um, so uh there's there's things are formulated to have a good impact safety impact without a whole lot of strange ingredients and, and decreased side effects um uh to have you know they decrease a lot of health problems of or people that they, even if they do have cancer they have an impact on decreasing the return of gift cancers like basically as far as pathology goes we're involved in cancer resistance um pain non-opioid as well as ADHD and uh, oh, deal boosting the immune system with getting different viruses that keep mm -hmm. mutating everywhere. It's just COVID keeps changing, you know. So we, we focus on different pathologies, but we do have a preventive focus too. Okay, okay, cool. Go ahead, Thompson. Sure. So, uh, so Steph, switching gears a little bit. I um, so I know you're a little new new ish to growth craft but i still feel like you know compelled to ask the question what attracted you to growth craft and what what do you like about it so far that i know again i know you're a little new so it might be a little uh a little early to ask but i'm still curious like what attracted you to growth craft first and and what you find uh what what have you found to be uh that you like, is there something about it that you like so far? Join the Growth Craft Startup community online via Zoom each first Tuesday of the month at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time for Expert Tuesdays. 
With Expert Tuesdays, you'll hear from one of our top-notch expert advisors and thought leaders in an informative workshop or presentation focusing on a topic important to emerging and growing companies. From sales and marketing to storytelling and leadership, in this hour-long monthly session, you will be able to connect with the GrowthCraft community, advisors, founders, and others. And you'll learn entrepreneurship skills you can apply to your startup project uh, right now. Check out the links to the GrowthCraft website to join us on Expert Tuesdays in the show notes below the podcast player you're listening to right now. And thanks. Well, uh, our bank leader bank mentioned GrowthCraft, so I wanted to, to explore what you are doing. I like what you're doing. You have like a graduate um, class seminar approach, which is relaxing and you learn and it's positive. So I decided to join it because it's um, people like myself, uh, and you, even you as, as, a, as a person in sales and marketing, we do a lot. So it's a relaxed learning environment that promotes innovation and creativity. And it's a place where you can um, think and connect. I like that. It's a relaxed environment to, 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 to figure out what your next step is. And it gets support, business support. Because the business world, uh, company, um, running a company or getting it going, there's is a lot involved. It's actually, not just doing research, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of things, uh, steps, it's, it's just different right now in this time. Everything's fast paced. So, yeah, I like WorldCraft because they help you, like, innovate and um, be focused. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we're rounding the corner here um, on our conversation with uh, with you today, Steph. And so um, <clears throat> I'm going to ask the, the basic question here that we always ask our guests. Um, other than the growth craft question, uh, we always ask our guests here towards the towards the end of our time together. Um, what would you like to promote today, um, if anything, or how can people check you out? Do you have a website? Um, are you speaking anywhere? Are you putting anything out on social media? How do people connect with you in order to find out more about what you're doing and about your company? Well, they can explore the company on we're on LinkedIn.com. Um, we're on LinkedIn and, and uh, what's the other you know, Mainly, I, I work on the, the LinkedIn. We got to spend more time with social media. But um, uh, it's S. Elvira, S. Elvira Davis, uh, LP Therapeutics. The name of the company is LP Therapeutics on LinkedIn. Beautiful. Well, we will have links to LP Therapeutics and we'll have links to Steph Davis and all the other pl- on LinkedIn. Oh, I um, forgot. Yeah, we're also on Facebook. I was. Uh, yeah. with the research. Almost forgot. <laughs> That's yeah. okay. We we almost forget about Facebook here all the time too. Don't worry about it. It's, all the time. Don't worry <laughs> about it. It's okay. Um, but um, but we will have links to uh, where you can find Steph on Facebook and on LinkedIn, um, and find out more about what she's doing with her project with um, uh, LT Therapeutics, um, and check that out um, at all the places where you hang out on the internet. Once again, I'd like to thank Steph Davis for joining us today on the Growth Craft. Oh, you Live. said what did I want to promote? Yeah. Yes. Uh, what did you want to promote? Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I want to promote expansion or support of women businesses in the U.S. because uh, not enough of them are obtaining enough capital. So, support of more women businesses will bring in billions of dollars, mm-hmm. uh, and that's mentioned in Forbes magazine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, no, we 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 definitely um, are big believers in um, women businesses, m- minority owned businesses, women and minority owned businesses, um, and definitely uh, believe in expanding the franchise um, of folks who are in the space of entrepreneurship and startups. Uh, and that's actually one of the one of the core uh, principles that we have here at um, at GrowthCraft. So we're always trying to we're always trying to do more work and promote more in that area. So uh, there we go. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. This is, this is I'm glad I discovered or was referred to this organization because it has been helpful. Awesome. Well, thank you, Steph. I appreciate you coming on the podcast with us today. Um, and with that, uh, we're out. All right. Thank you. Speak to you again in the future. Each second Thursday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time, join GrowthCraft live and in person at Second Thursdays at CIC, located at 1 Broadway, Cambridge, Massachusetts. 
Located at Kendall Square, CIC features the most engaging entrepreneurial community in the Northeast, right next to MIT and minutes from Harvard University and downtown Boston. With 250,000 square feet of professionally managed, flexible workspace, CIC has every office amenity you could possibly need to scale your startup project. For those of you who are local, or if you're just visiting Boston, GrowthCraft advisors and founders can meet others in our community face-to-face. -face. Join us for an informal social and informational get-together. Meet others, chat with advisors and peers, make connections, and then stay for Venture Cafe, starting at 4.30 p.m. Eastern every second Thursday at CIC. Check out the links to the GrowthCraft website to join us live and in person at Second Thursdays at CIC in the show notes below the podcast player you're listening to right now. And thanks.